There you go. Should be running. Right. Yeah. yeah. All right. So I learned in my life that you can speak to the world and have the first augmented reality app on the iPhone happen. I spoke on my blog, I told the internet what I wanted to see the future be, and an intern at Yelp read that blog and made the first augmented reality app on the iPhone. And tonight we're gifted with three legendary people who pushed the world into artificial intelligence. And I wanted to hear them talk about what's uh, AI in a decade gonna be. I think that was the question we missed this morning. And I'd like to hear the three founders of Siri talk about what they think the world after augmented reality cars starts really happening and after, aug uh, I'm sorry, art uh, <laughs> autonomous cars and augmented reality glasses happen. After those things happen and we are in this new world, what does that look like? So let me turn the camera on and uh, Adam Chire. You want to stand up and tell us? <laughs> I'll move my camera on you. I think um, as we move forward in the future, some things will shock us. I mentioned today, ChatGPT melted my mind despite having literally having predicted it, watched it day by day evolve. It still shocked me, and I thought it achieved things I never thought I would see in my lifetime. Um, so that can happen. On the other hand, the more we get new things, the more it seems the same to me. Maybe that's just a question of getting older, being old. All of the phenomenons, all of the things, it feels so much that the emergence of ChatGPT, just like what it felt when Siri came out. The same viral TV commercials, the same usage going crazy and they can't handle it. All of these things happened. You know, the reporters saying this is the greatest thing ever, this is the worst thing ever, you know, this is evil, this is, it's like, all of these things happen with ChatGPT and with Siri. So my prediction of 10 years from now, uh, in some ways I think will be, just like Siri today is, you know, on the curve that was talked about, the hype curve today, just be part of our lives. We won't even really call it AI anymore. Right, it'll be part of, like, do, when's the last time people said, oh, Siri is artificial intelligence? <laughs> like, nah, it's just Siri. You know, of course it understands my voice. Of course I can retrieve information and do tasks. But it's not, it's not AI. AI is magic. So first prediction, <laughs> ChatGPT in 10 years will become, that style will become a fabric of our lives. We'll accept it. We'll use it, it'll be amazing, but it's not AI, right? The definition of AI just changed five months ago. Six months ago, AI was machine learning. Now, AI means conversational assistance, which this field is perfectly positioned, they might add, <laughs> to capitalize on it. So next 10 years, we're gonna apply it, we're gonna use it, we're gonna maximize impact, we're gonna get bored with it we're gonna accept it. And then something will come along <laughs> in 10 years that's gonna melt our mind and will be the new definition of AI. What is it? Um, I don't know, I'll, I'll pick, um, I'll pick a human brain interface, brain implants. I'll just pick that. And why do I say that? Um, I was talking with my other co-founder because I would never put chip in my head and I go well you realize there are millions of people who already do who wire electronics to neurons in open brain surgery and it's called cochlear implants there are deaf people who lose their hearing we literally open up their head wire in electrodes to neurons put a little microphone with software that controls the pulses going to those neurons and because of the brilliance of our brain, neuroplasticity, we adapt. And we literally, our brain rewires itself to these new signals and we can now hear again. 
right? I go, if you do that, meaning we're now hearing through software, right? There's no audio wave necessary to stimulate those, that, that sound. I go, if that happens, you know, no reason I can't be sending and receiving thoughts that, you know, inter, inter um, person. So I actually think it's possible that that will happen in my lifetime and, and there are things that happen that, that have happened that I never thought I would see in my lifetime. So that, that'll be my prediction. Do I want it? Not sure. Kind of creepy. You know, the idea of, of controlling. You can skip the glasses, you can skip the batteries if you can just change your senses uh, directly you know, use your retinas. You don't need new glasses or even contact lenses. So I'll, I'll pick that as my uh, next frontier. And that will go. That's truly artificial intelligence because you're taking your real intelligence, melding it with something artificial. And hopefully the sum is better. Thank you. Thank you. Dag. Dag. Nothing like getting put on the spot. Yeah. <laughs> there it is. Pizza teleportation. <laughs> so I just did the calculations after lunch, and it's uh, right around 9.30 a.m., 2034 is when it lights out for us. So just so you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I ran a few algorithms. I actually asked ChatGPT, like, count, do the countdown and added a few parameters, and that's what it came up with. So enjoy the next 10 years and three months of your life because it's going to be a ride. Um, I, I agree a lot with what Adam said. I'm not sticking any um, chips in my brain. Uh, <laughs> I'll just talk to somebody. I don't need to do it through my brain. Um, but yeah, I think I think ChatGPT will become a, a, a tool that is sort of like Adam said, the fabric. Um, that's going to be. I think there's going to be many many unicorns that develop these industry specific domains that are very very good at this, and they're going to add incredible voice uh, text to speech, so it sounds human when it's, when you're speaking with it. Customer service is going to have a lot less employees in it. Um, that's a big aspect of it. I'm in the healthcare business right now. I think that's going to be greatly impacted by, <laughs> by AI through personalized medicine. Um, we're already working on algorithms that detect, for example, when you use your mobile device to measure your blood pressure, there's something called the blood pulse waveform, which is what my new company does, is track changes in that. You take the blood pressure cuffs and the stethoscopes and you toss them out. You're using your phone for everything. And it's watching whether you're taking your meds. We're interacting through uh, both chatbots and real people to answer questions about people's condition, what they should be doing, should I up my dose. Just day-to-day -day medical uh, you know, interaction with the medical system through artificial intelligence. And I think that's gonna be a big trend. Uh, so personalized medicine, I think is gonna be a part of that. Companies like Alpha, like Google Alpha, um, DeepMind, if you guys are familiar with protein folding, have you ever heard of that before? I mean, when you understand what they're doing now with that, they're basically getting close to understanding um, the very basics of how the human body works, that's the cause of all disease. It's not just one disease. So I think medicine, using AI on that, you've got also, you may have heard about in imaging, if you have enough data, you can look at a million different pictures. Uh, AI is already better than uh, doctors at predicting cancer because they're seeing the things that happen prior to the tumor forming. So I think just examples of how I think uh, in medicine, in the areas that we talked about earlier today, 
Uh, I also think that the vision of the personal assistant that we have all been dreaming about for many years becomes a lot closer to reality. I think there's a lot of work to do in the personalization, some of the other things we talked about, but hopefully we inspire you know, people to actually work on this stuff. And yeah, I think we're, it's gonna be a big part of our life. It's gonna be the biggest AI, as, as Adam said. I mean, we've kind of known it for a while, but of course, it, you know, timing is everything. Computing power gets there. The algorithms get there. The, the new techniques like LLMs get there. But it becomes the fabric of, of everything that we do from medicine to personal assistance to everything else. So that's a little glimpse, and especially on the medical side of what I see, but eat well, drink well, spend time with your family. <laughs> <laughs> you only have 10 years left. <laughs> we're, almost, we're almost there, we're almost there. But from what I understand, it suddenly just, it'll be lights out, so it'll, it'll be painless. Snowflake. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to figure out what the prediction is. I'm thinking sea level rise floods the data centers or something. Something happens in 30 years. Um, I, I love talking about the future because it's something that you can't be wrong and you can't be right about. It. I guarantee you're wrong about it. Uh, but uh, I can tell you about the near future and then a little bit out there. What's really, what, I, I'm an old fart, okay? I've been in AI literally since 1981. And that was graduate level already. So I've seen a lot of it and has done a lot of this, but I've never seen it move as fast as it has in the last 18 months. It is exponential, it, and I hate that word, I used to ridicule people using that word inappropriately. It's actually appropriately used now. We're talking about the advance that's happened in the last couple of years. Um, and what, what's interesting is it almost, it's almost, there was a bunch of things leading to it, we've all heard about the GPUs and all that kind of thing, but they stumbled over a technique, a software technique, transformers with attention, that's the basis for all these large language models. And, when you, and that thing is now being used from everything, from not just English language, but fMRI data. I mean, things that have nothing to do with language. Anything that has a sequential pattern to it, or can be turned into a sequence, including images, are all are game for this architecture. It's just one invention, right? And there's a ton of hungry people working on inventions like that. It's the next you know, Nobel Prize kind of sort of invention. So, and that invention, by the way, came out of translation. It came out of an attempt to do their job at translation. And that is blowing everyone away. And we're finding out that it, they may have stumbled on a basic principle of why we have evolved intelligence. We have a completely different architecture for intelligence than large language models. Don't let them tell you it's nerves and neurons. It's not. We have completely different. But we have something weird. We have a short-term memory. Limitation. We have brilliant minds, a trillion connections, 80 billion neurons, and yet we have this seven plus or minus two things in our head at one time. What, what's that all about? It turns out that that thing, that restriction, might even be the basis, that might be the attention mechanism in terms of transformers. That may be correlative to that. It may, they may have come into a the digital parallel computer version of that idea, which is why it's starting to get this general purpose stuff. So, as a technology nerd, I'm saying there's something really there that. Now, the, the good news is that obviously we can start aiming this thing at all kinds of interesting problems, like we're starting to. And it's not just, you know, it's not just, again, it's just not just language and chatbots, it's all these other things it's working on. All, any problem that can be thought, the thought will improve the progress in. Most of the problems that we don't need thought, like we have to global climate change, this isn't a thought problem, it's a will problem and a communication problem. But then let's like talk about the, what could also be happening with what's, what we already have today. Um, not only did they discover a possibly amazing general purpose way of getting that intelligence, we also discovered of all the modalities that, we would, that we've been playing with in AI, we've been playing with you know, video and music and, and voice and language and so on and, and, and just pure mathematical abstractions, language was the magic thing. And it turns out that language, as Yuval Harari says, is the, is the operating system of human culture. It is in fact the universal UI for humans. And that means that this is not only an AI that's smart, it's a smart at dealing with humans. And that's what makes it this time different also. It makes the future really hard to predict. So in, a, in this sort of chaotic future, there's lots of branching. One, a good, a positive direction is that we actually learn how to figure out how to get this little buddy to be our little buddy, <laughs> right? To actually augment us, serve us. Um, and the other dystopian future is other, other people get it to play an adversarial role with respect to us. Take, manipulate us, take advantage of us, convince us to do vote against our best interests, things like this. They're both possible with this technology, right? 
there's one thing that hasn't been solved yet, which is what if we could use this technology to help us collectively make better decisions? So that when we do vote, or when we do um, meet, meet ups like Alan had worked on it, or, or these other kind of collective actions, like when we form new sorts of entities, corporations might be the last year's version of economic uh, formulation. There might be new, new uh, structures created that actually have AI in, in the middle of it, but are owned by humans and governed by humans. There are like, all kinds of ways you can imagine creating things now. When we do these things, is the AI making us work better as a species together and as members, or is it driving us towards our brainstem? So that's where, that's where the future bifurcates. Now, what I wish would happen is, like I said, I alluded to it, that education is a absolutely killer. Education all levels, but there's just, you can rise, everybody, every human being can benefit from this and learn better, right? Healthcare, in many ways, is bottlenecked by thinking, particularly in, in, the, in the grinding experimentation phase of, and, and, and other kinds of phases where you just have to do a million experiments and it can just have it worked out, okay? Um, but the real frontier is understanding human psychology. That's the real Up until now, we have had pathetic data samples for human psychology. You get a PhD in psychology, you might have a thousand subjects, like five years with them, nothing. You do 100,000 subjects in five minutes, in social media, right? If we have chatbots talking to 100 million people every day, we can learn so much about human nature. We can literally help figure out why we keep killing ourselves <laughs> and causing poverty. All these things that we don't like about the way we live are caused because we don't collectively think well, right? So that's my hope for the big, big 10 years from now. We have harnessed AI to help us make us collectively more intelligent. I don't, right, thanks. Just so you guys know, if it's true what he says that education is the killer app, I would recommend getting the associate two-year degree. So that, <laughs> that gives you nine more years instead of seven. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs>